Hello and welcome to the Wonder Woman of Aviation podcast sponsored by Extreme Flight and Hilo Social Media. This is an exciting day. We're at Oshkosh 2023. We're inside the guppy. I'm here with Ray, Ray Heineman, Heineman, Chief of Aircraft Operations for the Johnson Space Center. I'm one of the guppy instructor pilots and uh, been at Johnson for about 15, 16 years. Wow, that's quite mm -hmm. an accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the aircraft that we're in? The Super Guppy uh, actually was, this particular Super Guppy was built in 1983 and its uh, main purpose is to fly oversized cargo. Uh, we can carry payloads up to 25 feet in diameter. That is the largest diameter uh, fuselage in the United States. The Beluga XL is the only one that's bigger in the world. Uh, we carry large objects, but basically airspace or lightweight objects. So we can carry other aircraft. We can carry spacecraft. Uh, we do a lot of work uh, moving uh, uh, rocket parts around and space capsules. So it's, it's that kind of work. Now, how old, when was this first um, created? So the first Guppy was actually built in 1962. Okay. And it was designed to help NASA with logistics. NASA on the Saturn V had the third stage that was being built in California. Mm -hmm. And to get it to Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama for testing and then to Kennedy Space Center, they had to go by water. So they'd go oh. down through the Panama Canal, up the Mississippi, down the Tennessee River and down some other rivers to a dam basically. And then they'd go overland to the Marshall Space Flight Center, test it, go all the way back around and go down to Mississippi and around Florida to get to KSC. That would take anywhere from 18 to 24 days. Okay. When they started flying it by Guppy, they could actually go it, or do the whole thing in about 18 hours. Wow. So it, it had a tremendous savings on time uh, for testing. Uh, and they would carry the uh, upper stage. It was called the S-4B uh, for the Saturn V. Wow, that's, that's an amazing piece of history. So you mentioned Super Guppy. Were there other Guppies then? Yeah, the very first one was actually called the Pregnant Guppy. Ah. And the story behind that was after the design was created, one of the uh, wives of the, one of the guys working on it said it looks like a pregnant guppy. So that's how the name came into being. Uh, but after the pregnant guppy, there was the super guppy. Uh, there was also the mini guppy, the mini guppy turbine, and then this version, the super guppy turbine. This is definitely, I mean, a big aircraft. Can you tell me a little bit more about the logistics of it? How, you know, what is the wingspan? How mm -hmm. heavy is it? All the, the fun nitty gritty stuff. Uh, max takeoff weight is 170,000 pounds. Uh, max landing weight is 160,000 pounds. Uh, it's uh, roughly 150 feet long and 150 feet wide, you know, roughly. Uh, I think it's 35 or 40 feet tall. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we certainly go to a lot of places that have longer runways. Our minimum runway length is 7,000 feet. And when we get there, we need some ground support equipment. We'll have to get a ground power unit, a DC power card is what we call it, and also a huffer because there's no way to start the engines without some kind of air pressure to get the engines turning over. Okay. So there's a lot that goes into it. Um, if we're moving a payload, there are literally weeks and months of design work that go into actually mm -hmm. uh, getting the payload ready to uh, install and having the, the chains properly and all the loads t calculated. This airplane is very interesting because it not only has a longitudinal center of gravity, mm -hmm. but it has a vertical center of gravity. So if we okay. take a payload and get it up high to take advantage of the fat part of the fuselage, you have some angle of bank limits. I mean, think of it as a bowling ball on top of something. And as you start to roll, that bowling ball gets too far. There's no way you're coming back. It's going to continue to roll. Ah. So we have to go through all those uh, calculations and risk assessments to make sure we can do the load. Wow, that, that's crazy. <clears throat> and fuel, like what is the fuel consumption? Uh, we burn about 5,200 pounds per hour. And if you asked me to convert that to gallons, I'd have to take <laughs> a minute. But it's roughly, uh, say, 700, 800 gallons an hour. Okay. Yeah. That's... So for a four engine airplane, that's probably not too bad. We okay. don't go very fast. We uh, plan for 240 knots of ground speed and our max airspeed is 210 knots. So we don't get anywhere fast. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be the next question. Like yeah. how fast does the guppy go? <clears throat> Super yeah. guppy. <laughs> yeah, not very fast. And, okay. and honestly, in the past, before we got our GPSs installed, we would actually carry a road map and follow. I don't want to say IFR or I follow roads, but we would certainly mark on the map uh, where we were because we could tell by the road system where we were. Okay. Now we're in the flight deck. How many <clears throat> individuals, how many people can fit comfortably in the flight deck? Yeah, so we typically, for a training flight, we'll have at least two pilots, uh, the okay. instructor and the trainee, and we'll have a flight engineer. On okay. a mission, we'll have a second flight engineer and typically a loadmaster 
and a couple of mechanics. Okay. Um, so the, for the flight crew, three to four, and for the support crew, probably another four people on a normal mission. Um, this airplane, you know, is really a flight engineer airplane. Mm -hmm. They control the engines, they control the start, the shutdown, all the uh, temperatures and pressures. They're watching all the temperatures on the uh, interior of the aircraft. They're doing all the electrical systems, fuel, con uh, fuel controls and things like that. All the pilots do is say, set this power setting and that's how we fly. Okay? Oh, okay. But that's important because there's no boosted flight controls. It's all cable and it's all 1940s technology. So right. we're actually muscling the airplane around the air when we fly. Ah. There's no autopilot. So we typically will trade off every 45 minutes to an hour because you just get tired. That, that was going to be my next yeah. question. What's the most interesting <coughs> fact about the Super Guppy? Yeah. <laughs> Those things, you know, certainly flying it is a challenge. A crosswind is a challenge because of the side area. Um, it not only pushes you off the runway, but weather cocks you into the wind. Mm -hmm. So uh, a cross and landing in this airplane is, is quite an adventure at times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of intricacies. There's a lot of little things that go on that, you right. know, to me is kind of common place but uh maybe from a ga or another world it might seem kind of silly i don't know to me it looks like we're definitely in a spaceship <laughs> there's yeah. so many buttons but that's just I mean, that's all, how my mind thinks <laughs> yeah it's all manual trim there's big trim yep. wheels for pitch and roll and yaw right here okay uh like i said the throttles are operated by the flight or engineer uh, the only time the pilots touch them uh is on landing and going into reverse okay the airplane lands in a very much a three point or even a nose down attitude. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when you're flying it and you even go back to flight idle, the engines are still producing thrust and therefore the wing is still producing lift. So a lot of times you'll see the, the wheels up, a, you know, six inches or a foot off the ground while the nose gear is actually touching down. But as soon as they get the throttles back to kind of a flat pitch or even a reverse pitch, mm -hmm. the back end settles down and now you're just going down the runway. Wow. This is, this is a pretty amazing aircraft. Um, definitely something that I never thought I would get a chance to get into. So thank you for taking the time. Sure. One last question. Um, so you did mention Saturn V. What is the main mission of the Guppy now? So we're still supporting human space flight. Uh, we are doing a lot of missions in support of the Artemis program. Uh, Artemis I, for example, went to the moon just last November, December. Mm -hmm. We carried Artemis I on this aircraft to go up to Ohio for testing and then brought it back to Kennedy Space Center. I had to sign for it. Uh, it's hard to imagine what it's like to sign for something worth $2 billion. Yeah. but I had to do it uh, so I had that for a day up there and a day back um, and then we are also doing other things we're moving heat shields around we're moving uh, government aircraft like a, if there's a damaged t-38 or something somewhere they contact us we can load it on the airplane and take it to get repaired <clears throat> excuse me a lot of places you know they can't repair it where it happens so we'll take it to a repair station and get it worked on but we do primarily government missions, either NASA or DOD or other government agencies. That is really cool. So there's definitely some purpose still to the Super Guppy. Oh, yeah. We've got missions scheduled to uh, at least 2028. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I see the air show has started, so we're going to kind of wind things down. Okay. Where can find, people find information about the Super Guppy? We, if you want to do a web search, we have a public web page. And, uh, and, the address is, escapes me right now, but certainly if you put NASA Super Guppy in there, our page can come up and you can find out a lot more about it. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on the Wonder Woman of Aviation. And here's your show.